welcome back guys on YouTube. Yes, I am still streaming. I'm sure one of you is about to ask whether or not I am. To be honest, I don't think many of you have because I am recording this in advance. Now, anyway, before I bother, I have been warned that I better start training before I get stuck in Chapter 2. But I do know, and Twitch will hate me when I admit this, that Chapter 3, you get... By the end, if you've not chosen which story route you're on by the end of Chapter 3, which occurs by these events that pop up randomly, you know, when you go home, I suppose, if you don't choose a route, or rather, when you do choose a route, you progress down that story path, and certain characters become playable and unplayable, and certain characters become less and less frequent to appear in the story. What I'm getting at is it's actually you choose one of the heroines to go with. Thus re leading to one of the reasons Rika loves this game quite so much is that you get um, H scenes for the varying heroines. That's all I'm going to say. Anyway, I will now return home. Hopefully. And there's already a fuck went in the stock my ass. Wait, what do you want? Cleaning up the misunderstanding about Serev. Um... Before I do anything, I try to put everything together in my head. It's not really a problem of apologizing, but of changing a belief that people already have. With only rumors and unreliable sightings, they're just automatically assumed to be dangerous. Given what I overheard, that seems to be common belief amongst alchemists in Yuridora. This is just idle talking, but once you start thinking about it, this whole thing is just a little strange. Why did we assume that they're dangerous, when the only thing we know about them is that they're magical creatures? Maybe since they don't look like us or have human forms like Kohakarin, we assume that they're actually dangerous. But since I've heard even less about people like her, I assume that's rare. We're afraid of the unknown. Thinking like that makes it simple. When we don't know something, we stay on guard until it becomes dangerous to us. And then there's only one thing to do. I had to educate people on his species. But I can't do that without knowing more myself. I need their help. The first step is to start talking with one of them, otherwise I'm not going to get anywhere. Right now, but whenever I talk to Yuya, he just sighs and ignores me. There's no way he'll help. I need to know more about his species. we are all for asking you a little bit. I'm gonna point one thing out that I thought was pretty clear, but allow me to point out when we get back. I'm still losing money! <laughs> oh crap. Negative, 213 pounds. Bollocks. <laughs> There's a reason I never go home. <laughs> I'm losing so much money. But anyway. I'm making loads of money fighting stuff, but I'm losing about the same amount of money by, you know, coming home. So it's kind of a bit and a bit now. So, you know. Anyway, let's talk to a far. Actually, let's see first. But, yeah, I'm kind of stuck. It's a case of, do I want to talk? Do I want to go home and save, or do I not want to and save my money? I cannot choose, because the money's necessary to remodel and make the stuff. Hmm? Well, the problem is, look, it costs more money to upkeep an iceberg. Okay, let's see, if I expand the workshop, I cannot expand the workshop without, well, obviously stuff. Money, more money, and more stuff. Ah, right, what do you want, Foxy? Yes? The door opens, I assume that someone's here for that request. That's right, can I help you? She gives me a very stern look before answering that it has to do. Uh, yeah, uh, no, uh, that's bullshit, your dad's talking lies. You know, he's cheating on your mom, right? <laughs> Cause no, why? Uh, there's certainly one here, but I wouldn't say that I'm keeping him. I can't chase him out, he's stalking me. I know he won't eat me before you start worrying. The girl snaps her mouth shut, crosses her arms and suddenly waits. From the look of it, she's not gonna just let me brush her off. But I'm not sure what answer I could give her that would make her happy. <sighs> I can't believe you're in trouble again. Laguna? 
He appears out of nowhere and breaks the silence between the two of us. Your inquisitiveness deserves praise, but bringing a sedative into your home... But since it is you, Will, I assume that you have thought this through, haven't you? What I want is for the people to spread their understanding of him through you, Edora, and erase our ignorance. That's why I go and walk with him. I want to, want to know more about what his people are like. Hmm. Well, miss, would you like a glance at how he is progressing? If you consider this an emergency, please, you should report him to the guild. Hey now, Laguna. What a meddlesome woman. It is nice to be young. If she becomes an alchemist, I can see her being a part of Rosanna when she grows up. Now then, the rest depends on how you are willing to how hard you're willing to work. You said it. Thanks for gonna owe you for that one. <laughs> I'm helping you from the shadows. Cheers, man. Fucking okay, needed that one. Yeah, that woman's never gonna bloody leave me alone. And annoyingly, much like Sid said, as we found it earlier. Hello. If I don't quite start training pretty soon, and by that I mean that's a couple more parts, I will genuinely lose. Or get stuck in chapter 2. One or the other. More likely to lose. But anyway, you don't like what happened last part? <laughs> but anyway. I meet you, Ella, in the bar and talk about se to talk about the setup. When I tried to talk to him, he just sighed and looked tired. I'm not sure I'm not sure we're going to be able to get along. I need to know more to have any chance of actually talking to him. Yeah, I think he may be right. He was quietly watching me while we were talking. I remember that it looked like he was staring inside of me. Rub my chin as I think. You can't ignore Kura yeah, Kohakuren's order, so maybe then I need to prove to him that I'm worth talking to. But if that's the case, I don't know how I'm being measured. Yeah, I guess I was pretty desperate by then. I don't know if it'd be I'd be okay, so all that he saw was my anxiety. That's why Uya doesn't think that I'm worth his time. Yeah, I think I get it. If I show him I'm different from what he's used to, I might get his help. So I'll join you. My treat and thanks for meeting me today. Whatever you say, we can eat together. Yeah, that girl, I never understand you. What? I need to get some kind of liquor to apologize to Kuhaku. The best person to ask is an expert on the subject. And I may drink a lot, but I don't know much. Hey old man, I need to get a drink uh, I need you to get a drink ready for me. You came all the way here to ask me that? Is it a present for someone? Well, something like that. I need a good eastern liquor. Hmm, give me a minute. Looks like this he thought of something. He goes and sit back at the bar. A few moments later. How about this? He has my cup when he comes back. The liquor inside it looks like pure water. I give it a try. Ugh, it goes down smoothly, but warms you up from the inside. This is Sumisaki, pure liquor. It's liquor reported from the Far East. It is a distinctive flavor and is popular in Yuidori too. You've never had it before? I prefer lighter alcohols like beer. Yeah, I think Kohakuren would like this. I'm glad you like it, but I can't give it to you for free. This is a business. Let's see, I'll sell it for 2,000 pounds. Isn't that a little steep? Idiot, I've got a hunch that this person you know is very fond of drinking. You know, you don't want cheap liquor. You last one, I can't think of any argument against that. You don't need to buy it right away. I've always got good alcohol to sell. Can't see me whenever you have the money. Got it, thanks. I don't have the money right now, do I? 
No oh, crap, I'm broke as a joke. Oh god oh, damn it. I need two grand and I've got 78. I am broke as a joke and it ain't even funny. Uh Sal! Wait, what? Huh? What did, no, no, no. Why did I just grab? Um, um okay, that works. Let me sell that. Maybe that. Um, one of these. Um, um, see, look, it's worth all of these. So why isn't it fucking sold? Uh, let me see. Like, uh, okay. party. Let's have the uh, put you on exploration, and then put. I can't even use her to do stuff, and I can't use him either. Mm. But you can manage the shop, cause you like that stuff, right? Maybe. Oh god. Service 32. Just wait. We've got service ranks. When the hell does it show up that? Uh, strength. Body. 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 Service 24. Four. She's useless. 42, because she's kawaii. Tw See, no, she should have like 100 or something, because she's, um, bosom-tastic. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's useless. Nope. She's not bad. Right. I'm leaving the store to you, kid. Wait, what do you want? It's about time to close up the store as the sun fades from the sky. I flex my hands and try to relax. Okay, let's go. I'm going to get, I'm going to go to the backyard now, where we always try stage during the day. He's resting in the corner of the yard, but stands up languidly when I walk out. Normally he just glances at me, but maybe he senses something is different today and looks straight into my eyes. I want to talk. Can you take? Can I take some of your time? I speak directly to him and he doesn't shy away. He stares through me, but I return his look without becoming flustered or hesitant. Ugh. His eyes suddenly turn down and then return, like a nod. He's allowing it then, and he wants me to continue. To apologize to Kakarin and to clear up the misunderstanding, humans need to know about the Sarev. But since I know next to nothing myself, I'm not quite sure what I'm supposed to do. I would like your help so that I can learn the truth. I carefully choose each word and my full conviction is behind each one. His three f tails flicker behind him. I'm not quite sure what that means. Hmm. His sharp eyes look down once more, then return. There's no question about it now, he's accepting it. I am in your debt, thank you. Once I thank him, he gets up and walks into the house. The conversation apparently has ended. I breathe a sigh of relief, he's agreed to willingly help me now. It feels like I'm on the brink of a new adventure. Whether or not it will succeed depends on what I do now. I slap my cheeks to drop myself back to reality and start thinking about what to do next. So, what? Just keep talking to the fox? Okay. First I need to understand the Sarev race, so I invited the best one, the best one to teach me into, the best one to teach me into the workshop. Today I'm going to examine his physical features. We got slender, sharp like knife. Wait, sorry. We got slender, sharp like a sharp knife. But it's hard to tell what his actual physical structure is. So the best way to find that out is to physically touch and examine him himself. Okay, pardon me. I reach out to put my hand on Uya's body. I slide my hand over his hair multiple times, testing the feel. It's a lot smoother than I thought. His hair is long and thin, and flows across the surface of his skin. Since it protects his body, I thought it might be firm and stiff, but it's quite the opposite. That means your hair has other uses too. It must be a conduit that allows him to handle flames well. A way to help him channel magic, basically. I pull up one strand of hair and try to examine it closer. But Emilisa appears on the other side of it, frowning. That hurts. I don't have any decent retort though. Uh, I just got a little wrapped up. <laughs> well. When I feel panic rising in her sharp look, I immediately step back and give up my spot. I wanted to have her touch his hair and tell me what she thought too. Is it okay if Emilisa touches you too? She must have been excited about that, I feel bad about forgetting to ask Yuya before. 
you know it's an acceptance though. I guess it doesn't matter if it goes from one person or two to two. He doesn't fall over from Emilita jumping onto, onto him. He just sighs and closes his eyes. She happily rubs her cheek against his side. Please don't go too far and make him mad, okay? Emilita completely ignores me. I'm satisfied with what I've learned today at least. Ah, wow, we've got a lot to learn about the forest. Wow, that's cool! It's really cool. Anyway. I've been with Uya since this morning. I want to know his daily life so I can understand him better. So awesome. Kind of looks like my old cat. Off in the face, but you know, the blue, you know that. But anyway, I thought it'd be a good idea to invite Sawari to join me and help. At least that was the plan for us. He just sits there, he just he's just sprawled in the corner of my yard. He's basically mo he's barely moved around, and it's already past noon. I thought he may be sleeping, but every now and again, he turns his sharp eyes towards us. <laughs> Aggie knows he's being watched. You think so? Yeah. He's a formidable fool. He doesn't even stir, just bark, just basks in the sunshine in my yard. I'm fighting a losing battle against drowsiness. I stare more intently to fight off the sleepy feeling. So? He hasn't moved for a long time. Suddenly that strikes me as strange. He's been staring at the same spot. He's not moving at all, not even his eyes. So why he suspects the same thing? I'll follow his gaze to what he's looking at. <laughs> he hates kids. He hates kids. <laughs> there are boys and girls loudly playing around and having fun in the alley across the way. He's been staying awake by watching those children this whole time. See, she thought the nice side, which was he loves kids, and I thought the dark side, which is he hates them. But you know, just like an old man. But maybe it's worth investigating further. I can't overlook a single detail, so I steal my mind in concentrate. Time keeps passing as I watch him. Evening comes and the sun disappears behind the horizon. He finally moves. Uya gets up, quietly pads into the house. Where is he going? So Adi and I follow after him. We catch up to him in my room. He walks in a circle in front of the fireplace before lying down again. So basically, he likes basking in warm spots. He glances at me for a moment, then turns away and yawns. Like he was trying to say that I just wasted my day. Nope, it wasn't pointless, I discovered something new and I can check out. There's got to be some reason he was watching those children. Once I learn more about her, maybe I can try inviting some of the neighborhood kids over to interact with them. I think we've run out of stuff to talk about. Yep. Even yep. So I now need to actually go do something. Uh, I didn't want to do work now. <laughs> Kinda enjoyed the time I spent doing nothing and enjoying myself. There we go. More doing nothing than enjoying myself. Win win. Wait, what do you want? Koi, omae no sagashite ita mono ga atta zo. Hey, what? Huh? Huh? Hold it, Yola. What the fudged? I know I like forward women, but um, you, you gotta at least give me a little warning as to what the hell is going on. But, yeah. She forcefully grabs my hand and pulls me along after her. What? You mean a food? You found a food that he likes? I might find out what he likes. I tried all kinds of food to try and find something he likes as a way we could connect. 
fruit, veg, bread, beef, chicken, fish, but he didn't show any interest in any of them. I don't know what to do, so I talked to you about it a few days ago. She drags me to the plaza, uh, sorry, to the plaza and stops in front of a stall in the corner full of strange things. This stall sells rare foods imported from this for a dear beast. I look where you all is pointing at some kind of slender food bound in a thin brown skin. Looks like you're interested in, in my Inari. You can buy one if you like. Inari? What kind of food is that? We don't have any in Uedar. It's fried, bittersweet, bean curd wrapped around vinegar rice. Uh Looks like you still don't quite get it. How about trying a bite? I don't accept it good well if he cuts up a piece of it. He hands a piece to me and another to you. You're dressed like you're from decent Frody. This should remind you of hope. We thank him and then both take a bite. Mmm. When I bite into it, the juice from bean curd leaks into the rice, making the combination taste exquisite. It's simple on the outside, but the taste is deep and delicious. This tastes very good. Eula's face relaxes as she chews slowly, clearly lost and far away thought. I like it. I'll take three and then we can have it for dinner. Sure thing, coming up. He wraps it in a thin bark package to carry it. That's also unusual for you to order food. If you if you really didn't show me this, I'd never have known about it. I think Sir Av will be happy with this too. Next to you, Yuella. Uh, I see. Alright then, here. I hold out one of the packages the man gave. Have this for dinner tonight, my treat. She looks carefully at me, like she's judging. I urge her to take it anyway. Once she realizes that resisting is useless, she accepts it with a nod. Uya comes to meet me when I get home. Here, I brought us some dish frodi and inari. Let's eat it together. I hold it high to show off, show it off with a beaming smile. Holy crap! And they're snatched out of my hands. He clearly eats them right in front of me. Uh, I guess you like it then. I stare at him blankly in surprise as he finishes wolfing down both of them. With a mixture of happiness and sadness, I go back to the bucket to buy more. Okay, that thing loved them. God knows, whatever. I've learned some things about the Seraf. Can you lower your price now that I know some decent info? You know, maybe 500 quid? Because I really can't afford two grand, I'm never gonna make that much money. Till I start making stuff like houses or something that I can't lose money on. Yeah, that's wrong. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep losing money. But anyway, after doing some thinking, I talked to the old man about it. I'm going to need his help if I want the entire city to learn. Sounds like you've learned a lot. I understand your enthusiasm. I'll do whatever I can to help too. I'll ask my bar friends to help out and spread work. What you've told me. Hopefully that will ease some of the fears about the set I It will take some time, but it'll work. I've got confidence in you. Thanks old man. I'll keep working. I'll try to find more ways to get along with him. Good luck. Okay, now I really need to start doing stuff. Because I've run out of stuff to kill time and not actually have to work. <laughs> I need to actually do something productive for the chick. Yeah. So I need 2G. And I ain't gonna get 2G doing nothing. Yeah, just doing nothing. Uh-huh. No. I'm genuinely, as you can see, casting it out for something else that I could do besides get my ass handed to me by teleporting sons of bitches. Is he a playable character in my party is what I want to know. So let's just check. Yes. This may or may not be an important thing. God damn it! Screw you! Screw you and all your guesty bullshit! Just fight for me! I want the friggin' penny to do anything productive! Yeah. We're guests. We do nothing. Yeah, damn right you do nothing. Find it. We'll go to the polluted oak tree. Do something! <clears throat> Just this sod. But right then, okay. Base 4 and her. That should really do it, to be honest. Uh huh. Because I ain't blinging that blob. 
Anyway. We followed the river upstream to investigate the fisherman's request. It's a large river north of Eudora with maybe many tributaries. We follow the branch that the fisherman has told us about. Hey! Emilita sees a catfish in the mud of the riverbed and starts blowing her out. Looks just like that one that we saw on the market the other day. Yola walks silently, and Sawari kept watches the area. So, what's the cause then? The river water is clean, there's nothing wrong around here. Let's go a little further upstream then. We keep walking. Yola suddenly stops and points at the riverbank ahead. There's a fish floating belly up in there. Emilita rushes over to the edge to look at it. So Addy points to the other side of the riverbank. There are more dead fish floating around the bank. We keep walking further upstream. After a while, we come to a small lake in the forest. So why do you suddenly see something and stop? Sorry. Suddenly see something as look to the far side of the lake. I follow her eyes. The surface of the water is shining like a rainbow. What? I reach toward the water to check it, but Sawari stops me. She looks back to the far side of the lake. A slow pace is forgotten and we rush straight towards it. We follow Sawari to the far side and stop next to a small brook following and flowing into the lake. There's a small hut nearby. It's clearly abandoned and started to fall apart. Right next to the brook, something is sinking into the water. No, it's not sinking. There's something at the bottom of that brook that's tinging the water purple. From there, it's spreading through the brook into the brook and then flowing across the surface of the lake. It looks like some kind of oil coating the surface of the water. Just what is this? I look at Sawari and it looks like she knows something. She meets my eyes, but she hesitates before speaking. So, this ここに湧き出しているのだと思います。これが魚が死んだ原因なの？どうする？正体はわからぬのか？浄化をしておきましょう。スワリ、プレパレーション。どうやら原因となるヨドミは二箇所ありますね。ここと。ここです。私がヨドミを浄化します。皆さんには援護をお願いします。What do we need to do? まず私がヨドミに待機して浄化を始めます。浄化が終わるまでの間、私が魔物と接触しないように守ってください。私が魔物と接触したり、浄化が終わる前に移動してしまうとやり直しになってしまうので。I got it. I'll protect you. Purify the polluted areas. So what is the Right. So we cannot have her be attacked. Or do any attacking from the sounds of it. Or rather any uncertain attack. Which may or may not be a kick in the teeth. Stand by. Stay. Oh gosh. Yeah, of course the teleporting son of a bitch is out and about and ready to kick my ass. Not like he had enough fun of that bloody last time. Could have sworn he should have done. Hmm, let's see, 13, 26, 13. Right, so the pollution in this lake is caused by something or other in there. And she has to stop it before it kills me. Sorry, let me rephrase it. She has to clean it. But to clean it involves going there, and not getting hit by any amount of goddamn monster. Which is a royal pain in the ass. Apart from that, you know, hunky dory. And there's an evil version of a uh, Suina here. And yes, the sound effect was necessary. Okay, advancing to the. Oh crap, we're gonna die.